The news moves fast, and numbers are our language at Statista. I'm Molly. Let's take a look at the numbers behind the headlines. January was a big month for news out of China. The government removed the last remaining instruments of the so-called zero-COVID policy, eliminating quarantine requirements and opening the border for international travel. COVID-19 restrictions in China were among the world's strictest. The country has progressively dismantled the policy following protests in cities across the country in late 2022. Kickstarting travel and tourism could provide a major boost for the Chinese economy. Tourism revenue had been steadily increasing every year before the pandemic, but the sudden halt in travel created an instant economic black hole. Tourism operators around the world will be excited to once again welcome Chinese visitors, who consistently outspend any other nation of origin. And the return of business travelers from overseas can encourage investment. For many overseas Chinese, the easing of travel restrictions has come at just the right time. Lunar New Year, also known as the Chinese New Year or Spring Festival, is traditionally a time for families to come together. The travel period leading up to the festival is one of the busiest travel times of the year, sometimes referred to as the largest human migration event on Earth. The government expects more than 2 billion trips through the holiday period, nearly double the number of journeys taken during the 2022 festival. China and its investors will expect the easing of restrictions to improve the country's outlook after slower than expected growth in 2022. The Chinese government also published data showing the national population decreased, the first decline in six decades. The population of mainland China fell by around 850,000 people in 2022, ending the year with around 1.41 billion residents. If current trends continue, India will become the most populous nation on Earth, the first time that China has not held the top spot since modern records began. Global inflation skyrocketed in 2022. January saw the release of some key data, giving us an impression of the scale of price rises. But what does this mean for consumers? Post-pandemic challenges and the Russia-Ukraine war are two of the main global developments that contributed to price increases around the world. For instance, the United Kingdom has been struggling with the worst inflation in 40 years, leading to a significant cost of living crisis. But these aren't the only factors driving prices up. Take the price of eggs in the United States, for example, where people consume an average of 288 eggs per year. Between December 2021 and 2022, the price of eggs rose by 60%, adding further strain to household budgets as avian flu wreaked havoc on egg-laying hens. As well as the price of groceries, energy prices increased significantly in 2022. In Europe, increasing food and energy prices were sometimes met with civil unrest and protests, especially in Western Europe. As wages struggled to catch up with soaring prices, economists and central banks worldwide have predicted yet another difficult year for the global economy. While some countries are now seeing prices even out, including the price of energy, we can't expect major savings just yet. I know what this job takes, and I know that I no longer have enough in the tank to do it justice. With these simple words, Jacinda Ardern resigned as Prime Minister of New Zealand in January 2023. Ardern took office in 2017, when she became the world's youngest female head of government at age 37. Throughout her tenure, Arden faced several major crises, with the Christchurch shootings, the 2019 White Island volcanic eruption, and the COVID-19 pandemic. The Arden government achieved a resounding victory in October 2020, in part due to successful crisis management. But approval ratings fell throughout the rest of the term. 
Arden's decision stands out from political resignations elsewhere. In other cases, reasons were often political pressure or massive scandals. In Arden's case, it is clear that work-life balance was the deciding factor. Work-life balance is important for employers and employees alike. In New Zealand, just 15% of workers are dissatisfied with their work-life balance. By comparison, in the U.S., workers report high to very high burnout levels. Despite their satisfaction, New Zealand is nowhere near the top of the work-life balance rankings. Workers in Italy have the best work-life balance, averaging 16.5 hours per day for personal care and leisure. To find out more about these stories and countless others, head over to Statista.com and join us next time for another round of Month and Data.